Making sequels has always been a formula that worked well in the past, since you don't have to introduce new characters or a new theme for the audience. But it's a formula that comes with some flaws. Let's take a look at why sequels have a harder time to function than the original. First, we are going to take a look at the different kinds of sequels that exist. To make it easy, I would place them into three different categories. The natural one, which came to fruition due to the writer already having sequels in mind when they made the original. The surprise of success, which came about after they saw that the first one was a huge hit and decided to make another one. I'll be back. And then there's the nostalgic one, which is made several years after the original one, which seems to be on the rise nowadays. Whoa. Some movies have an advantage when it comes to sequels, mainly the ones that fall into the natural category, since sequels have already been on the creator's mind. This means that the writer could already have left unsolved arcs that require a sequel to be solved. But some genres also have an easier time when it comes to creating sequels, which makes it easier for the surprise of success sequels to work. One of these genres would be the adventure or action genre, where the main character can set out on a new quest for each movie. The growth of the character isn't what's important. It's the journey and the thrill that's in focus instead. As long as the writers can come up with new adventures for the main character, these kinds of movies basically have no limit in how many sequels that can be made, as long as they can hook the audience. One great example of this would be the Satoichi movies, where Shintaro Katsu famously played the blind samurai in 26 movies between 1962 and 1989. The other two types of sequels, the surprise of success and nostalgic one, have a harder time creating something that will hook the audience for a second time. Since, and this is mostly the biggest problem with sequels in general, the main character has already concluded his or her arc. The hero has conquered the physical goal and solved all the internal problems. Often for the sequel, these goals have to be erased and once again have to be solved by the hero, but masked as different problems. There's nothing new for the hero to discover that fits the theme for his growth, which means that the sequel tries to tell the same story for a second time, only different. This is often noticeable in the surprise of success and the nostalgic sequel. The writer wants to give the audience more of the same, but risks just telling the same story as the first one. But if staying the same isn't a winning formula, change sure would be, right? Not really. Even this is a pitfall on its own when it comes to sequels, especially if it has an established fanbase. Sequels are often a chance to bring a new audience to experience what so many before them have come to love. But to bring in a wider audience, writers tend to alter things that might not fit the original work. Okay, I'll hold. Hello? It can be everything from adding a lighter tone to an otherwise dark or grim world to reshaping characters of old. Another problem is that sequels often risk undermining the original work as well. Take Terminator Genesis as an example. Here, John Connor gets attacked when Kyle Reese travels back in time and becomes a cyborg himself. This means that both the past and the future are no longer the same as the original movie. They have thrown all that out the window and instead found themselves in a hole filled with contradictions. They tried to tell the same story as the first one, only different, but ended up undermining the whole franchise instead. Even the prequel managed to dig this hole deeper causing even more plot holes as they went along. But that's a whole other video. One more reason why the sequels risk undermining the original movie is that the stakes always need to be increased for each sequel. 
The villain needs to be scarier and the hero needs to overcome bigger obstacles. Obstacles that would have been impossible to overcome in the original. Which risks the sequel becoming less personal for the hero and instead becomes meaningless. The hero has now obtained so much power and skill that it shadows the feats in the first movie. And it's not because of growth, but because of plot devices that's forced into the sequel just to make it bigger than the original. Recently, there has been a rise of nostalgia-focused sequels. Characters that we haven't seen on screen for over 20 years now pop up to fight an old foe or set out on one last adventure. But sometimes these beloved characters are just used as bait to retell the story with new characters. And the character we once knew is just there for a moment to connect the original movie with the new one. We get to see the character we once followed on an adventure years before, just to see that nothing has changed over these last 20 years, except age. The character we once knew who managed to overcome the obstacles he or she was facing and who grew as a person is somehow now still the same person they were before and still find themselves in the same situations. Nothing has changed. The character has been frozen in time and has now become a caricature of themselves for the sake of nostalgia. I'll take it from here. In these types of sequels, we often get scenes that will tie the new movie to the old ones. The familiar catchphrase, in the game, the return to the old castle, and dusting off the old props for one last adventure. Probably. These scenes are there to remind us why we fell in love with the character in the first place. And perhaps why it should have stayed a fond memory. What intrigued the audience in the first film is hard to replicate in the sequel without retelling the same story. We can no longer enter this world with fresh eyes, discovering things together with the characters on screen. You can only save the world so many times before it gets redundant. It doesn't matter if you make a sequel that will retcon the ones that came before, but I will spin off and follow different characters. It's hard to recreate the moment when we fell in love with the world and the mysteries that it holds. But some sequels truly manage to bring us back and make us relive everything again, even if it's different. Thank you for watching. If you think that there's anything that I missed, please let me know in the comments below. Oh, and one more thing. Recreating famous scenes from the original. Yeah.